and that's what. <laughs> All right, we have Haley Kyoko here today. We love um, Haley. <laughs> how do you identify pronouns and sexuality, whatever you prefer? Um, I'm a she, and I'm gay. So, <laughs> Hi, Bob. She. Thanks she so gay. much for having me. So excited to be here. Obviously, yes. we've been friends for a long time, so excited to hang out. Yeah, same. This is, this is so nice. I'm so excited because like when I was putting this whole playlist together, I just really obviously wanted to highlight like up and coming new artists, but also like the iconic, like, you know, community leader. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I would have been a complete douche if, um, <laughs> you were wow. like right on there. Thank um, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, Okay, so I have a few fun questions for you. Okay. And the first one is, did you feel a difference in your creative process after you came out? I mean, yeah, definitely. I think I would probably say most artists probably feel a big difference because it's like you're un unmasking yourself or you're unveiling this truth that has always been a part of you and I used to write songs and I would be like kind of playful with the lyrics where I was kind of hiding innuendos and playing the pronoun obviously, game. Yeah, playing the pronoun game and, and then finally being able to say she and her and my music just felt, it's not that I wasn't truthful before, but it just felt more authentically me. Totally. And so it felt more freeing as an artist and I think it was more fulfilling for myself more than anything totally that makes that makes total sense I feel like yeah. for everybody um at least like knowing some of my friends who came out later in life just mm -hmm. seeing their like personality shift yeah after they came out just like there's this whole other level of openness and freedom that I think is just it's so interesting to watch and um yeah, like, of course, it would affect people's art. So it's really fun to see that transition. Because um, yeah. you were you were making music before you came out, so. Yeah, I mean, I released, I released one, I released two, no, I released one EP before I, like, I would say when I released Girls Like Girls on my second EP, The Side of Paradise, that was, like, when I was coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and and that was a scary moment I remember I was writing that EP and I had written Girls Like Girls but I wasn't planning on releasing it because I was like oh well I'm gonna let myself be successful first and then I'll let people know hey this is who I really am right. and there was I forget what the moment was but I had a moment where I was just like f it like I'm just gonna put it put it on the EP and like why would I wait, you know? And so, and that was like the beat. I feel like that was like really the beginning of my journey, just mm -hmm. like really being like my true self. I love that. That's so huge. Um, do you feel like hearing music with same sex pronouns and lyrics about, you know, same sex love and all that would have helped you maybe come to terms with who you were, felt more comfortable being open sooner, finding yourself growing up? Totally. I think I'm sure you would feel the same way, like being able to listen to a song and hearing pronouns that apply to you. It's like, it feels like you're going through whatever the artist is going through. And like, I just remember listening to music or growing up. Like I would listen to the killers a lot for some reason. And I like pretend I was Brandon Flowers. And like, to me, it was like, gay music because I was you know I was the voice singing and it would have been so cool to just sing along to an artist that I loved that was a woman singing about how sexy a girl is or how her heart was broken and like being able to sing that at the top of your lungs um I feel like because I didn't have it or maybe it was there and I wasn't I didn't um have the opportunity to see it mm -hmm. I um, found myself 
dreaming a lot. Like I just lived in this fantasy world and I would take these artists and I'd, I'd just like envision what my life would be like if that, if the song was really about what I was going through. Right. Yeah. I think it's like, it makes, it makes such a big difference and there's such, I mean, pronouns are such small words, but they really. They're huge. Yeah. Like, they really feel short. small, <laughs> but they're, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I think that's a better word. They're not small. Yeah. They're short words yeah. that really impact people and identify their, their authentic self. Yeah. It's so funny too. Like if I'm, I'll put on, um, put on some like random playlists where it's on, you know, like shuffle on whatever streaming just so I can come across new stuff. Yeah. Meaning. And it's like, I won't even be paying attention, but I will hear, I will hear if a girl says she, went yeah. to me. I'm like, what is what? <laughs> You're like, Ooh. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. We've discussed this, but like, I, I, I didn't know that Robin wasn't gay. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? No, I just assumed. Yeah, I assumed too. So, cause she would sing like, I, like I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. And I remember hearing the word her yeah. and being like, oh my gosh. Yay. She is, yeah, I just immediately was like, yay. <laughs> and like, I literally was hanging out with my friend Marla and she was like, no, like that is like, she was like all these other songs that I, I was like imagining all of these like scenarios but even that was like a big thing to just be able to hear, you know, her. And so imagine if, you know, that was actually what was happening. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> we can have her like song fanfics. I think she is. Funny. I don't know. Yeah. But in, in my mind, yeah, she's one of us for sure. Yeah. Honorary at least. Honorary. Yeah, definitely. Um, what's another fun one? Let's see. Ooh, do you remember the first same sex crush you had? Even if you didn't know, like, who it was like mine was the uh, the pink ranger the pink power ranger really yeah, i loved her i don't know why and i didn't realize what it was until i was older and i was like oh that's why i was obsessed with yeah her. no i my first girl crush was my first grade teacher miss spear mm. she was fire she had like blonde i love the natural curly hair like it was like naturally curly and kind of and then she had like these two bobby pins and I loved that her name was Miss Spears, so she was single, you know, and I was like, ooh, like, I have a chance. Like, this, like, who am I? My, you know, I my literally, baby self has a chance. Yeah, like, I, I literally peed my pants that year in my overalls, and I'm thinking, like, Miss Spears, the one. Um, yeah, she was my first, my first crush. I think I, I, I think I was very aware that I liked women. Mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that it was not, I don't think I was able to process, oh, that means you're gay or, okay. oh, that means you're different. It was more so like I had this crush. I liked these girls, but I didn't really recognize it for myself. Like I didn't really talk about it or discuss it with myself and be like, oh, that's wrong or, oh, that's different. It was just more so like, that's how I felt like throughout. Right. Damn. I don't know if you felt the same way, but that's how I, I didn't really process what it was. I just knew that that's what it was. That's how I felt. I had no idea until I met my first girlfriend. No clue. I had no, yeah. just, I was just upset. Everyone my has best their friend own. had all these crushes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, that's why I'm not like all boy crazy like everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, that's why I loved the pink power ranger. It literally was this big. Soccer. <laughs> Straight up, I remember that like the first time I I kissed my first girlfriend, and it was like my first mm -hmm. kiss with a woman, and whatever. And it was all of a sudden like that, like a nuclear bomb went off, mm -hmm. level of light bulb moment, where I was like, oh my god! Like all these little pieces were just like connecting and coming together, and I was like, shit, I'm really gay. Okay, like that's, <laughs> that's what that was. Cool, cool, cool. But it, you know, it's nice to like. Yeah to have that kind of, I don't know, that moment to really like put the pieces together and figure it out. So I think that's, what's really cool though, about our community is that we all are very similar, but we have like extremely different like experiences and journeys with self-realization of our totally. sexuality, you know? 
it's really doing doing this whole thing with everyone so far it's been so interesting hearing everyone's different stories because they're so yeah. they're so vastly different but then there's so many like nice little underlying similarities and it's just yeah. it's really fun to hear the stories i think there's a really like there's a slight silver lining to everything that's going on right now because we're able to see artists in a very stripped back way mm-hmm. yeah being able i mean being able to see people perform literally in their bedroom i mean mm-hmm. The thing is, is though, sometimes I'm like, I don't want like certain celebrities. I'm like, I don't want to know what their house looks like. I'm like, I just have this like fantasy in my mind of like what their lives are like. So like, I don't want to know. But like, then a part of you, it's like, wait, (laughs) what does their house look like? (laughs) And you're like, interesting. What are they wearing today? Yeah. Interesting. (laughs) Interesting color palette. Did you get that at West Elm? Or like, was that custom made? Like it's, yeah, it's a really interesting um, time. Yeah, it's it's fun to see for sure. Um, okay, that brings me to my last question because I don't want to keep you. Um, if you could dream up your ideal creation zone, so no limitations on electricity, physics, location, you could be in the ocean, in space, like in a forest, mm-hmm. whatever. What would it look like? I have two choices. That's totally Can you two fine. choices. You can do whatever you want. The first thing that came to mind was like an ocean with no waves, but like, but like the low, like they don't crash the waves. They just kind of go like this. Yeah. And you're in the ocean and like playing music and like rocking out singing, but you don't have like a wave ever crash on you. It's just kind of like this, like a little like flow, like this yeah. and the wind blowing and the sun's out, like maybe like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. So that's mm-hmm. one choice. And then the second choice would definitely be like, like, like a Machu Picchu situation, like top of the mountains, like vastness, like no one around and just like, like it's empty, but massive and like greenery and just like, I feel like that would be really cool. Sounds like, it sounds like a Coldplay music video. I'm like imagining (laughs) something like that. Sounds really great. I went, what about I, you what did you what did you pick mine I actually got this question because well, my hair looks crazy I actually got this question because um whenever I'm about to work on something I have to like meditate away all my self-doubt and like shit talking to myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I'll usually um I'll meditate that I'm in this meadow and I, I kind of like go to this meadow whenever I meditate mm. and, and it's like big grassy open and then at the end of the grass is this cliff in the ocean but then all the perimeter is like beautiful lush forest Mm. but then it's sunny and raining at the same time but warm rain but I'm not getting wet oh I love warm rain warm rain but not wet and there's like birds tripping (laughs) (laughs) like warm rain not wet my hair is perfect my face looks it's flawless is that why you don't want to you don't want the rain on you're like and I look perfect my hair is curly I'm like not trying to <laughs> yeah you're like cuss me out this is a no stress zone but I would have that and then um I usually go through like in my meadow when before I want to work I'll do this and in my meadow I go into this room and this room is covered with tvs all over and all the tvs are me saying whatever like bad stuff I say to myself in my head like you're not good oh. enough whatever and I go and I turn off each one of them individually Oh, that's and, really good. And then once they're all off, I go through this other door and it's like I'm back in the meadow, but I'm in this big glowing, like warm light bubble. And it's like all, you know, instruments and shit are there. And it's just mm-hmm. like, you can see the outside, but you're in this like cozy little warm bubble. Yeah, that's really powerful. I mean, you have to be like, that's like something you have to practice because like, you say, oh, I just turn off the TVs that say all the mean things, but, like, it's very difficult to do that, to be able to, like, identify all the voices, the Mm -hmm. verbal abuse that you, I do it to myself all the time, it's, like, I do something wrong, and my, my inner voice is, like, you Mm -hmm. suck, you know, and it's really hard, so that's something that you have to practice, but that's amazing that you're able to identify those, and then, you enter this space with this bubble that is just like fresh, clean. It's like a clean slate, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that's awesome. And I mean, it's like, I need more of that. (laughs) 
I just have like static TV, like just going on in my brain with all the things. And I just kind of like push it back. And then then every once in a while, I I know. And then every once in a while I have a mental breakdown and then they explode. So it's like, you know, I'm going to have to work on that. It's how, honestly, it's really helpful. Like I just know for myself, visualization makes such a big difference for how I feel. So yeah, um, same. just pinpointing like what the hell I'm thinking mm-hmm. that makes me feel bad and just going, mm-hmm. visualizing what it is. And either like, you know, if it's a painting, I'm ripping it off the wall and like tearing it up mm-hmm. or, you mm-hmm. know, just some way to dispose of that negative stuff in a visual way. It's just yeah. helpful. But. I love that. Yay. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so course. excited to be a part of the playlist. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, One more thing. I just want to take a screenshot as a picture so we can be a cutie. Smile like you. What the hell is my hair doing? All right. <laughs> One, two, three. Cute.